All right, how's it going, guys? Uh, Johnny Nerd out here. I got another pre made e bike review. This one is the Me Bike. This is obviously the scrambler style, e moped style that you guys all know that I'm addicted to. And so when somebody says, hey, I got, I got a bike like this, do you want to review it? I'm usually like, yeah, I do. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I build custom e-bikes and I also help people like you build your own custom e-bike as well. So if you want to, if you're interested in converting a bike or making your own bike or something like that, head over to johnnynerdout.com. There'd be a link to the website in the description. Um, I could help you, you know, buy all your components, get all your help for it and all that. But if you're like, I don't wanna get my knuckles dirty, break a sweat, I just wanna buy something, have it shipped to me and just be done with it, this is why you're here. You're considering buying this bike. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do an overview of this bike. I'm gonna do performance tests on it. I'm gonna test top speed. I'm gonna do some hill climbing with it, some super steep hill climbing. I'm gonna give you my impressions. I'm gonna give it an overall score on value, performance, quality, uh, things like that. And I'm gonna give you who, who I think this bike is for and who it's not for. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna go over the bike front to back. So it's got 20 by four inch tires up front. So you can see they're, they're just little guys, but they handle nice. Those, those fat, those little fat tires, when you get really big fat tires, it changes the handling on them. Okay, so down here we got 20 by four inch tires. Uh, these look like steel. Rims, probably aluminum. They're like the mag wheels. So no spokes, not a quick release. It's got the solid axle style front down there. I'm just gonna go handheld, guys. This will be like my little man on the street interview style. It's got a front suspension fork. This actually does have adjustment on it, which is nice. Um, a lot of these don't. They don't have any adjustment on anything. This one does. It does have a, a fender here. And it does mount, it's got two points of contact up here and right here. So it's on there solid. It's just a plastic one, but it works. It looks fine and I think it'll work just fine. Um, up front, we've got a headlight, LED headlight, obviously. Um, it seems fairly bright. There is a high and low beam to it, which is kind of cool. Oh, and up here, it, it's got hydraulic brakes front and rear, which is nice. And they actually work well. They, I was, it felt confident on the, the braking power. They are by Logan. They're Logan brakes, so they're not Tektro, they're not Shimano. They're, you know, they're off name brand, I would say. Swooping around here to the front, uh, to the cockpit, as we call it. Um, it's got a cut, nice color display. It kind of reminds me of like the 860C, something like that. It, it is nice. It tells you all, like a decent amount of information. There's a Bluetooth on here, but I don't think they have the Bluetooth up and running just yet. So, but it kind of gives you like the basic information. It'll tell you your battery percentage. Um, I, I did not see a way to make it say your battery voltage, but maybe that'll be an upgrade or maybe I just missed it. I wish it showed voltage. Battery voltage is way more accurate. Um, it just kind of tells you what pedal assist you're in, average mile per hour, miles, your trip odometer, things like that. It comes with a little bell, which is nice. Um, it's got the thumb style shifter by Shimano. It, it's a lower grade one. Some people actually prefer this style where you, you, you're just using your thumb to go easy and then to upshift. And then it's got a twist throttle next to it. Um, the throttle will take you up to 20 miles an hour. Pedal assist will take you up to 28. That's firmware that's not mechanically limited it's just you know governed legally down here we got a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery pack it's housed inside here it is removable there's there's keys right here that you could take this out you can charge it inside charge port is down here on this side you know it looks pretty decent it's got two uh bars coming underneath the seat here to make up the frame you've seen some there, it's one solid piece, or there's a lot of different ways to go here. Aesthetically, this is gonna be polarizing for you guys. It's got a rear rack, it mounts on two parts here. It's pretty pretty solid, I would say. And then it's got the rear shocks here, dual, dual shocks on both sides. Um, and they are adjustable, which is nice. It's actually got kind of like the motorcycle style adjuster where you like twist it. In my opinion, I'm only like 180 pounds. Actually, right now I'm like 175 because I've been doing a lot of smoothies. It, even on the, the lightest setting, it didn't have a lot of bounce to it. Didn't have a lot of compression to it. But if you're a bigger rider and they say this thing could hold up to 330 pounds, 
I'm sure you're, you'd be using it. And it is cold here. Maybe the, the shocks are coils, the springs, something are in there. And the cold just didn't want to, I don't know, didn't want to compress. Um, back here, we've got a 750 watt hub motor. People are always, it, it is geared in there. It's a geared motor inside, but which is different than these gears here. If you want to know the difference between geared motors, or I'm sorry, hub motors and like a mid drive, check out my videos. I've explained the difference between the motors. Um, it's got a Shimano Altis derailleur here. It's, you know, it's not the bottom, it's not the cheapest one. It, it's good to see that they put a, a Shimano brand on here. Sometimes they go with no name at all, which is nice that they didn't do that. And it's got the rear uh, fender back here as well. It's nice, nice to have full coverage. Hydraulic brakes in the rear as well. And it does have a brake light. So when you hit the brakes, that light, it blinks actually when you hit the brakes. And let me see, if you hold down the light, it turns into a tail light. So it's good for safety. Cool thing about this bike is it's torque sensing. Difference between torque sensing and cadence sensing, which most bikes are cadence sensing. Torque, it measures the pressure that you put on here. So there's a little sensor in here that when you're putting pressure on, on this, it'll send power to the motor. And the more pressure you put, the more power it sends. So it's it's definitely, you know, at least in theory, it's a way more natural feeling system. And it, it, it is nice. It's like, for in my opinion, it's like getting extra levels of pedal assist. This comes with five levels of pedal assist. You might be able to bump it up to nine, but it's like having gradation in between there. So you could put it on pedal assist five, the highest level, and then just lightly give it power and it's not gonna shoot you off like a rocket ship, which is nice. I mean, it's definitely, if it was like, you know, all things considered, if it was like, hey, do you want cadence or do you want torque? I would take torque sensing. It is a, it's a better system. Let's go do a performance test on this where I'm gonna go climb some hills and just go ride around, <laughs> go ride around some hills and we'll do a top speed test. Okay, so you can see, obviously, it's a hub motor. That's Hub motors are not the greatest at hill climbing, especially from a standstill. If you get a running start, they're a little bit better, but they're, they don't have torque. They're not built for torque. Um, for, if you need tor like monster hill climbing, you need to go with a mid-drive. Hub motors are great for light inclines. Like if you don't have a crazy hill, the, the hill that I just climbed, that's, that's a crazy hill. You probably don't have a hill like that, most likely. Um, I know it's hard to gauge, you know, pitches, but that's, I don't know, what is that, like 40 degree angle, 30 degree angle? I mean, it's it, it was a crazy hill climb. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it took a lot of runway to get up, and I just did that with throttle only. I didn't do any pedaling for that. Top speed on this, obviously throttle alone, it's 20 miles an hour. With pedaling, it'll go up to 28. You could go faster if you, you know, if you pedal really hard, you could go 99 miles per hour. That's how e-bike places should be. Be like 99 mile an hour top speed as long as you could pedal that fast. All right, cool. Let's do. Um, I'm gonna let's do a rating. I'm gonna give it my my ratings. So for performance, let's just start off because that's freshest uh, performance. I'll give it a I'll give it a five for performance. Obviously, this this isn't. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll give it a six for performance because I I like how it performs with the with the torque sensing. Power wise, though, it's not super powerful. 750 watt hub motor, you know, it's, it's, if you had a 750 watt mid drive, it would feel way more powerful. So I'll give it a six for performance. 
Um, it's decent, but it, it just kind of depends on who, what you're looking for. I'll give it a six for performance. If you need a lot of grunt, you want to go mid-drive. Initial quality, just looking at the parts and components. I like, I like where they went with hydraulic brakes. It, everything feels solid. I like the way that this battery sits up in that down tube nice and snug. And it, it feels like a, a good bike. I wish that they went with name brand stuff. But, you know, this, this retails for $2,300. I know right now, uh, I think for Black Friday, they have like $700 off. But, you know, prices fluctuate all the time with pre-made e-bikes. So it's hard for me to say. Um, but at $2,300, I kind of wish they would have, you know, put Shimano or Tektro brakes up here. But it, it is still good, regardless of whatever the price is. I'd give it an eight for, for initial quality. Like it feels solid, feels feels tight. And then there's ride quality. That's how it feels when you're riding it. For me, you know, I'm 175, 180 pounds. The rear shock seemed a little hard. The seat is wide. So when you're sitting on it, your legs are kind of bowed out. So if you're looking for this bike for like a commuter, like if you want to do some serious riding and you're a cyclist, you may not like this seat. You may not like how your legs are like spread apart. <laughs> it's kind of, it's not natural. I'll just say that. Handlebars, you know, you can adjust them. It's kind of got this like BMX style handlebar here. You could adjust it down a little bit. So you could kind of make it feel how you need it to. You know, you can make it as comfortable as you want. So for ride quality, I'll, I'm torn between a six and a seven. But I'll, I'll give Ty goes to the bikes. So I'll give it a seven for ride quality. You know, and obviously it's, this is not gonna be as comfortable as like a road bike or like a mountain bike or like a, a commuter style bike. But it feels, it feels solid and it feels pretty fun to ride. Well, let's go for design. What do I think of the design of this bike? I wish they would have designed the seat to be a little bit narrower just cause it doesn't, like it rides, it, it kind of digs into your your groin area a little bit. It's a little uncomfortable there. That's pretty much, that's honestly is probably my biggest gripe is the seat. So if you're a, if you're able to fabricate your own seat, that may be better. I wish they would have just not made this tube as wide right here and made it a little bit more narrow and then maybe ducked it out. That's honestly the only gripe. These scramblers, they're simple designs, they're simple bikes. That's why I think I like them is there's not a whole lot to them. But yeah, they designed it well. They got torque sensing and stuff. I'll give it an eight for design. Minus this. If this was better, it would have it would have scored higher. Um, then overall value for the money. So it, this is where it's a little tricky. It's you know twenty three hundred dollars MSRP. Black Friday it's fifteen ninety nine. I don't know what what price they're going to kind of settle on or where where the average price will be for twenty three hundred dollars. I think it. I think there's a lot. There's a, there's a lot of competition in this segment, but you are getting full suspension. Not a lot of these have full suspension and torque sensing. So they kind of have a little niche there. So for 2,300 bucks, I'd say it's about, you know, it's about average. For 1,600 bucks, that's a pretty good price for what you're gonna get for this, um, compared to other things out there. So it's, it's hard for me to gauge this one because 2,300 bucks, you know, I'd probably give it like a, you know, a six. It's just, it's mediocre, it's, it's okay. It's not like, what the heck are they thinking? For 1,600 bucks, yeah, this is more like a nine for a value for the money, I would say, for what you're getting for this style of bike. It's kind of hard to say. So take that, take that, take that. Okay, now I want to give you my overview of who this bike is for. So when I first was riding this bike, I had that song, Blurred Lines, you know, that blurred lines stuck in my head the first time I rode this bike. So I was like, people are either going to love this bike or you're going to hate it. If you're a cycling uh, purist, you're going to hate this bike because this, this thing is heavy. I want, I want to say it's like 70 pounds. It's, it's not light. And, you know, ergonomics, it's weird. It's not meant for getting, I would say if you're looking for like a commuter exercise bike, this is not it. This is definitely like, I would say like a campground, a casual rider. If you're planning on putting two, 3,000 miles on a bike, you know, per year, I don't think you want to get this bike. This is, you'd want to get like a road oriented street bike, mountain bike, something that's more standard bike form. This is more, I mean, look at the bike. It doesn't look, this is for like campgrounds, I would say, putting on like 10 to 20 mile runs. I think you'll be all right. 
you know, maybe you'll you'll wear like a seat pattern in on your butt. You know, it's got a, a decent size rack here. A lot of people are like, oh, it's a big bike. Maybe I'll put like a, a you know, trailer on it. I'll do some hill climbing. If you're like a hunter and you plan on putting a trailer on and climbing hills on it, the, you know, the performance of this motor is not going to be up to task for that. But this will be great for just running errands around town. You know, if you're going camping, you got this on the back of your truck. You're at a campground, you need to run into town. Something like that, or just around the neighborhood. That's what these scrambler bikes are for anyways. You know, these mopeds. So just know what you're getting into. But yeah, other than that, it's a cool bike. I got a lot of people like looking at it being like, whoa, I mean, it's a big bike. It looks almost like a motorcycle, which can be good or bad. You know, if you're trying to be inconspicuous, probably not gonna be inconspicuous on this thing. But it is kind of cool. I mean, it's people look at it and they're like, whoa, what is that? they're gonna probably stop and talk to you. So if you don't like people, don't buy this bike because they're gonna be talking to you. All right, hopefully that helps you guys. If you guys are thinking about buying this bike, I'll put a link to their website. You can buy it from them. I don't have an affiliate link with them or anything. I just do reviews on these bikes. I don't get paid to do these, these reviews or anything. So I'm trying to be as unbiased as pop possible just to help you guys make money. I know a lot of people are always like, what do you think of this bike? And it's like, I, I don't have time to go through everything, but if I can do a review on a bike and help a couple thousand at a time, that'd be great. Um, otherwise, if you wanna go build your own bike, go to johnnynerdout.com. I sell all the custom e-bike components and parts and help and consultations, everything you need to get you on an e-bike and make a, a good, strong purchasing decision and not waste a bunch of money. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.